What's up, Broncos country? Welcome to this Denver Broncos Syndicate Film Study, Free Agency Edition. I am your host, Gage Madrid. This offseason, the Denver Broncos signed quarterback Jarrett Stidham to be the primary backup for Russell Wilson. The team inked him to a two-year, $10 million deal with $5 million fully guaranteed. That's some pretty good money for a backup quarterback, so the Broncos clearly felt he was a key priority for him on the free agent market. Stidham figures to provide the Broncos with an insurance policy for Russell Wilson in case he gets injured next year or just doesn't play well. After having a previous track record for 10 years as one of the healthiest quarterbacks in the NFL, Russell Wilson has missed five games over the past two seasons dating back to his time with Seattle. And even when he was on the field for Denver last year, let's just be be honest, his play definitely left something to be desired. The hope is with Sean Payton in the building, Russell Wilson will be able to recapture some of his glory days, but if that doesn't happen, I feel like the Denver Broncos have a really solid option in Jarrett Stidham. Stidham's a former fourth round pick by the Patriots out of Auburn, and last season he started two games for Josh McDaniels and the Raiders after they benched Derek Carr. In those two games, I thought he played really well, especially in his first career start against the the San Francisco 49ers. So without further ado, let's just jump into the film from that game and answer the question, can Jarrett Stidham be an effective NFL starting quarterback? So we're going to start off with this play. Over his two starts, the Raiders really like to get Jarrett Stidham on the move on bootlegs and whatnot, and that's exactly what they're going to do here. This time it's going to be out to the right side. This is going to be on the Raiders' opening drive. They are driving the ball downfield quite efficiently. They've gotten a couple of easy completions for Jarrett Stidham in terms of screens and whatnot. So this is going to be his first real big throw of the game. The Raiders are in a jumbo package with an extra offensive lineman to the right side in addition to two tight ends including Darren Waller who is the guy that I have circled at the bottom of the screen in red. The 49ers are in a single high man coverage look, and the guy who's going to be covering Darren Waller is the safety number 29, Talanoa Hufanga. Now this is exactly the matchup that the Raiders want. Hufanga isn't exactly the biggest safety, and Waller is obviously a really big athletic tight end who almost acts as an extra wide receiver on the field. So this is definitely the matchup that the Raiders were trying to scheme. Now what Waller's going to do on this play is he's going to go up here and sort of engage with Hufanga to act as if he's going to block on this play action and then he's just going to release up field on this wheel route. Now Jarrett Stidham's going to do a really nice job of recognizing his one-on-one -on -one matchup and he's going to deliver a really nice throw on the run. Here's your play action, move on the run there, and look at the separation there between Darren Waller and Talanoa Hufunga. This is as wide open as wide open gets in the NFL. Jarrett Stidham sees it all the way and delivers a really nice ball, and this is a walk-in touchdown for Darren Waller. A really nice way to get the party started there for Jarrett Stidham, and that was a really good play call by Josh McDaniels. And this is something we'd see quite a bit in this game. Makes really nice. So moving on to the second play, this is going to be another good play here from Jarrett Stidham. San Francisco is going to come out in a cover three zone look, which is a look that they run quite a bit on defense. Vegas is going to send Hunter Renfro on a little jet motion on this play, and he's going to be the eye candy. They're going to fake the reverse to him on this play. Now they're going to pair that with Devontae Adams here who's going to be running a deep over route and you can see on paper where he can get into the gap in coverage and get open on this play. Now the guy that I want you to watch for San Francisco is Fred Warner. Now Warner is historically one of the best linebackers in the NFL and normally he does not get fooled very often but he is going to get fooled on this play by this jet motion from Hunter Renfro. They fake the motion right there, and look at Fred Warner. He totally bit on that, and he gets completely lost in the coverage, allowing Devontae Adams to get wide open and get right past him. Now, normally, Warner would not be able to vacate his zone, but he would at least be able to keep Devontae Adams in check somewhat on this route. But here, look at his eyes. He is completely fixated on Hunter Renfro, and I guess doesn't even realize that he doesn't have the ball until it's too late. Boom, Devontae Adams gets wide, wide, wide open here. 
And that is a huge chunk play for the Raiders. Good job there by Jarrett Stidham. Little hitch there. Delivers a strike. Now again, Adams is wide open. But he barely had to break stride on this play. There's your motion again. And again, it's a good job there by Jarrett Stidham recognizing the sort of blown coverage there by San Francisco and taking advantage of it. You want a quarterback who can recognize when the defense screws up and somebody who can take advantage of it when they screw up. So that's what Jarrett Stidham did on this play. Very nice. So here we've got some more good. It's going to be cover three once again for San Francisco. And there are several ways that you can beat cover three. One of them is by attacking the seams right here. This is a void in cover three. And that's a common way that teams like to attack it. Now they're going to send Waller streaking up the seam right here. And they're going to pair that with sort of a flat and up route here from Foster Moreau. Now you can see how both of these routes could potentially get open here. Now for Stidham, I'm assuming you're going to read this from the inside out. So this would be read number one. This would be read number two on the play. Now what I want you guys to watch here is the ball that Jarrett Stidham delivers. Now some may say that this is a poor throw. This is your motion right here and a little play action to pair with it. But I disagree. Watch how he puts it high and throws it to where Darren Waller has to turn around to make the catch. That is exactly what you want. You want to throw it back shoulder so that way he doesn't take a big shot to the ribs there. You see 31, the safety, who is charging right in. If... If Jarrett Stidham had put the ball out in front of Darren Waller, then 31 would have come in and absolutely smoked him. By throwing that ball back shoulder and almost intentionally under throwing it a little bit, that not only helps Darren Waller catch the ball, it helps protect him from a hospital shot. So that's actually a really, really good ball there from Jarrett Stidham. Good awareness there. Seeing his mismatch and delivering Darren Waller a really good ball where he can safely go up and make the play. This is a high football IQ play right there from Jarrett Stidham. Love it, love it, love it. So now we are going to jump into our first bad play here from Jarrett Stidham, and he's just going to miss this throw. You got Hunter Renfro right here in the slot. He's going to be faking as if he's running a slant, and then he's going to be breaking right back outside right here. Now Renfro is going to get wide open. Unfortunately, Jarrett Stidham is just going to miss this throw. We'll play action right there, and boom, man. Throws it way too high. You cannot miss that at all it's a really good route by hunter renfro you've got to hit that if he hits that that's a walk-in touchdown if not sets you up really close to scoring that's a routine pitch and catch right there and that's the first real negative play from jarrett stidham again man that's the easy stuff you've got to hit it on this play, the 49ers are going to be coming out in a coverage that we have discussed quite a bit here on the channel in previous film studies, and that is Cover 6. In case you're not familiar, Cover 6 is essentially a coverage that combines Cover 2 and Cover 4 principles. It is also known as Quarter Quarter Half. So in the left side of the secondary here, you've got Talanoa Hufanga, who's responsible for the entire deep half of the field here. Now the second half is going to be split in half by these two safeties, essentially making it the quarters element of this coverage. Now what I like from Jarrett Stidham on this play is he's not going to like what he sees downfield, so he's going to use his athleticism and his wheels to pick up the first down here on this third down and 10 play. Let's stop it right there. Stidham doesn't really like what he has. You could definitely argue that he could dump it off in the flats right here to his running back number 22 right there. Make it a little bit of an easier field goal attempt, but that's not what Jarrett Stidham's all about, man. He is a gamer. He's going to try to do whatever it is necessary to get the first down. And right there, he sees the little rushing lane open up, and he takes it. 
lowers his shoulder to pick up that first down. That is gritty. That is tough. You love to see that right there from Jarrett Stidham. Does whatever he has to do to get that win. So in the event that he has to see playing time for the Denver Broncos, I am definitely confident that he will bring these kind of plays to the table. Russell Wilson, of course, also brings this kind of athleticism, although maybe not to the degree that he once did in Seattle, but still, this is one element of the Broncos offense that they would not have to change at all if Jarrett Stidham came into the game. I really like this a lot, and you know Sean Payton does as well. So unfortunately, we do have to move into some more bad by Jarrett Stidham. It appears that it's going to be quarter, quarter, half once again here for San Francisco. And much like cover three, another way to beat quarter, quarter, half or cover six is by using seam routes. So that's what Vegas is going to do. We've got Darren Waller. I'm going to do that in a different color. That's what Vegas is going to do. We've got Darren Waller who's going to be streaking up the seam right here. And unfortunately, this time, although Jarrett Stidham does see it, He's going to be late seeing it, and that's going to create a bad throw here. Look at Stidham's eyes. The pocket starts to collapse, but right here, Darren Waller is already open on this play. The ball needs to be gone now. If you hit Darren Waller in stride, you lollipop it over this defender right here. Darren Waller could potentially stroll into the end zone. Look at this safety. His back is turned. So therefore, it would be really hard to catch back up with Darren Waller. If he did, it would be somewhere around the 20-yard line if he did at all. So this would be a big chunk play here. Jarrett Stidham has got to deliver the ball on time in this situation. Instead, he's just going to hitch on a little bit too long. The protection breaks down. He gets hit as he throws and misses the throw. You can't do that, man. Right there, man. Darren Waller is wide open. That's potentially a touchdown. Stidham's late. Gets hit on the release. That's just a bad play from him. That's one you'd like to see him clean up for sure. So here we're going to see Jarrett Stidham correct an earlier mistake, which is definitely good to see. Once again, Hunter Renfro is going to be running a drag route, fake the slant, break back outside. We saw Jarrett Stidham miss this throw earlier in this game in the red zone. That is not going to happen a second time. Boom, cleats in the ground, delivers a strike. That's good footwork, good anticipation. Sorry, that's the previous play there. But again, that's great footwork and great anticipation there. And you know that he saw his previous throw on the sideline, probably didn't like his footwork or something about it the last time he tried this throw. This time he hits it, and that's a sick route too by Hunter Renfro. Two steps in, then break out. <laughs> that's really sick. But that's also good to see from Jarrett Stidham. Delivers the ball on time with accuracy, exactly what you want to see there in that situation, and does not send it high like he did last time. So it's definitely good to see Jarrett Stidham as a young quarterback learning from his previous mistakes and not making the same mistake twice. That's definitely one thing I can say throughout this entire film evaluation is I don't think I ever saw Jarrett Stidham make the same mistake twice. That tells me that he's a really smart guy with a high football IQ and should fit right in in this complex Sean Payton in offense. Now this is going to be another example of Jarrett Stidham's high football IQ. The guy I want you to take a look at first off is Darren Waller right here. He's going to be going on this little motion and then goes back to where he originally was and Hufanga is going to follow him. So what does that tell Jarrett Stidham pre-snap? That tells him that this is most likely going to be man coverage. Now what confirms that is the alignment of Devontae Adams right here and his defender. Look at his defender, how he's only about a yard away from Devontae Adams. This is what we call press coverage. That is another man coverage tell. Now, when you have Devontae Adams in a press man coverage situation, there is no better play to run than the goal line fade. All the quarterback has to do is just chuck it up to Devontae Adams in his general vicinity. That's a horrible drawing, but more there in the back corner of the end zone. 
And Devontae Adams can use his wide range to go up and high point the ball. And that's what he's going to do on this play. And a good job by Jarrett Stidham recognizing his one-on-one. -on -one and delivers a really sick throw. And Devontae Adams makes an incredible catch, man. Look at Devontae Adams. He makes an incredible adjustment. Gets both feet down. That is an absolutely sick, sick catch. And kudos to Jarrett Stidham for recognizing his one-on-one -on -one matchup and taking it for easy money. Again, there's your little motion. Recognizing that it's man coverage. This is a good high football IQ play. Puts the ball where it needs to be, and Devontae Adams does the rest. Now, Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy may not be Devontae Adams, but they can absolutely go up and high point the 50-50 ball in these situations. That's what they do really well. So pairing them with a quarterback like Jarrett Stidham, who can place a goal line fade like this well, that's certainly a positive asset for the Denver Broncos in the event that Jarrett Stidham has to play. Love it. And again, high football IQ play, recognizing his one-on-one -on -one matchup with the best receiver in football. Now here, Jarrett Stidham's going to display some of his poise when the play breaks down and as well as some of his just general playmaking ability. I forgot to draw the play art, but it's once again going to be a cover three zone for San Francisco. That's the defense that they run more often than not. Now the pressure is going to collapse the pocket on this play. So Jarrett Stidham is going to have to get the hell out of Dodge. You see there, Nick Bosa absolutely beats the left tackle Colton Miller. So it essentially turns into scramble drill left. Now, Jarrett Stidham does a really good job keeping his eyes downfield. He could definitely run here to get the first down. That is, so, that is certainly something that he could do on this play. Although right here, he would probably get lit up by this 49er who's coming downhill. That said, though, you see a lot of quarterbacks in this situation that would just look to run as opposed to keeping their eyes downfield. But not Jarrett Stidham, though. He knows that he's got one of the best receivers in the NFL and getting open in these scramble drill situations in Devontae Adams. Adams did it for all those years in Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers. Now you're going to see we've got three 49ers defenders right here who are all closing in on Jarrett Stidham, but that's not going to phase him one bit, man. Keeps his eyes downfield the whole way. Keeps drifting and drifting and drifting. He knows he's going to take a hit, but look at Devontae Adams right here. He's wide open, nobody downfield, and there's a clear throwing lane here for Jarrett Stidham, but he does have to get through this guy. So I guess it's not really a clear throwing lane, but it is a throwing lane. He's got to be able to get through this 49ers defender right here, and if he hits Devontae Adams, that is a walk-in touchdown for him, and that is exactly what is going to happen. Jarrett Stidham, man, look at the throw he delivers to Adams, and then Adams does the rest. I'm just going to pause it so we don't get a copyright claim. But that is absolutely insane right there from both Jarrett Stidham and Devontae Adams. Again, man, look at Jarrett Stidham's eyes, keeping his eyes downfield the whole way. Gets clotheslined there, but I believe that's Fred Warner. But still delivers a beautiful ball to Devontae Adams, who's wide open. And he does the rest. That's a great play there. Remaining calm under pressure when the play breaks down by Jarrett Stidham. Love it, love it, love it. He is a gamer, man. You love this kind of stuff. Gets lit up. Flag on the field was, I believe, for either defensive holding or DPI, but either way, the touchdown did indeed count. That's a sick play there from Stidham. And yes, Adams was wide open, but still, Stidham able to hang in there and take a really big hit and get him the ball. Doesn't help when you have wide open receivers if you don't have a quarterback who can get them the ball. Here, the 49ers are going to come out in man coverage, which is not something that they do particularly often. So on the strong side of the formation, they're going to be running sort of a switch release kind of play. I believe this is Mac Hollins right here. He's going to be releasing inside and sort of running this kind of post-ish route. Then you've got Darren Waller right here. He's in the slot, so he's going to be running this wheel route. 
you see this switch release right here. This is designed to create some traffic right here between the defenders, and hopefully they get lost in the traffic and they lose their man. And then they're just going to pair that right here with a little flat route to Hunter Renfro right there. Now, I imagine that this play is designed to go one to two to three. Or it could potentially go the other way. It could go first look towards um, first look towards Waller on the wheel, then look the flat, then look to the inside. But generally, you want to read from the outside in. Stidham, kind of a little fake pump. Gets that wheel right open, wide open, and once again delivers it back shoulder to help protect Darren Waller from taking a shot to the ribs. That's good ball location, hitting that little sort of hole shot, if you will. That's really, really nice. Another high football IQ play there from Jarrett Stidham. And sure, Darren Waller was relatively wide open, but... Stidham has to recognize it and also has to deliver him a good ball, and he does both in this situation, so you love to see it. Now, this play is just going to be kind of some bad luck for Stidham. We've got Devontae Adams right here just running a quick little curl route, nothing fancy. Typically, that is a quick pitch and catch. If Adams could make his defender miss right there, potentially he could turn up field and get the first down. A very easy, routine play here. Unfortunately, it's going to go completely wrong for the Raiders. Good idea there by Stidham, looks to hit it. Unfortunately, the ball gets tipped up in the air by a defensive lineman and ends up getting intercepted by one of his fellow defensive linemen. That's just one of those kind of rotten luck plays right there and just hats off to the defense for making a good play. Stidham had the right idea, just again, man, sometimes the defense makes good plays too. That's why they get paid the big bucks as well. I believe that's Kerry Hyder Jr., 92, that's going to tip it. Falls into the hands of 95 right there for San Francisco. That's a big turnover and just an unfortunate play there for Jarrett Stidham. And that's one that's going to go down in the stat line as an interception. But really, if you look at the tape, clearly that wasn't Jarrett Stidham's fault. That was just a good defensive play. That's why I always say you cannot just look at the box score stats. You have to watch the tape because that will say he threw an interception on the box score stats. He threw another interception and we'll break that down later, but it says he threw two interceptions in the box score stats when in actuality, this interception was not his fault at all. Now, this is a play that I just really do not like from Jarrett Stidham. It's man coverage across the board. And when you have Devonte Adams and it's man coverage, that's generally the direction Direction that you want to look now I don't know if Stidham expected Adams to release outside and instead he actually ends up releasing inside or what's going on here but I feel like Stidham is going to be once again late on this throw now sure it's gonna be a bit of a messy pocket the nickels firing off the edge but he just drifts back and sort of lobs it up that's the kind of crap that Broncos country would always ream Drew Locke for, and I would obviously ream him for it too. That's an ugly play, and the ball is nowhere near Devontae Adams. It's tough to tell if he's running a go route or a sail route. It kind of looks maybe towards more of a sail route. But you see Jarrett Stidham just drift backwards, lob it up off his back foot, that's literally the kind of crap we saw Drew Locke doing all the time. So that's just ugly footwork, and I don't know if it's him not being on the same page with Devontae Adams or what. Granted, this is their first game together. But still, even if they were on the same page, you'd like to hope for better footwork there. You got Nick Bosa, that I guess is really what stumbles him up there, of course. When you have Nick Bosa coming right in your face... I'd be kind of a little scared too, but we've seen Stidham in previous instances stay poised and deliver an accurate throw with good footwork, and unfortunately here, that is not going to be the case. And it's throws like this why you can definitely sit here and see why Jarrett Stidham is not a franchise quarterback, but at the same time, he has made some other throws in this game that makes it pretty clear why the Broncos like him and why they think he could be an effective starter in the NFL. He's probably not going to win you a Super Bowl, 
But if Jarrett Stidham's ceiling is, say, a Jimmy Garoppolo or something like that, personally, I think Stidham may even have a little bit more talent than Jimmy Garoppolo. You will definitely take that in a backup quarterback if you're Denver. So this play is just going to be another rock-solid, high football IQ play from Jarrett Stidham. So the 49ers are going to be trying to fool the young quarterback a little bit by disguising their coverage. You see Fred Warner right here. He's currently walked up on the line of scrimmage showing blitz, but in reality, he's going to drop back into a Tampa 2 zone. Now this attempt at a coverage disguise is not going to fool Jarrett Stenham at all. He's got his tight end Foster Moreau just working on a little in route right there, a little basic route. And that's going to be something really easy. Gets open in the void of that coverage. Good job by Stidham. Not getting fooled there by the coverage disguise. Delivers a really good ball. Cool as a cucumber. And that is an absolute strike right there to Foster Moreau. Shout out to him, by the way. As he, about, as he gets ready to undergo cancer treatments. We're all in your corner, Foster, but that's a nice play by him right there. Hopefully, he'll be back on the field soon, making more and more of those kinds of plays. So here, another good job by Jarrett Stidham, keeping the play alive and turning a broken play into a good play. Left guard, 66 right there, Alex Bars. He is going to get, he's going to get beat really bad right there by Kerry Hyder. Good job by Stidham keeping the play alive. Turns into scramble drill left. And the reason I'm showcasing this is this is not an easy throw to make for a right-handed quarterback. He's rolling out to his left. You see right there, he's got a man open, but he's going to have to be able to at least get himself set to a point where he can make this throw. Although he may not be able to get himself set completely, he's going to have to at least turn around and get himself in a good position for his arm to be able to deliver this kind of throw. This is the kind of throw that you see starting quarterbacks in the NFL struggle with. So it's going to be good here to see Jarrett Stidham be able to make this throw and turns a broken play into a first down. Again, a relatively intermediate degree of difficulty throw for a right-handed quarterback. And again, it's something I see a lot of starting quarterbacks in the NFL struggle with. So this is good to see Jarrett Stidham being able to showcase that playmaking ability rolling out to his left. Love it. And then here we got another dangerous one. It's going to be another blitz here from San Francisco. Sometimes throws like this are what get Jarrett Stidham in trouble. You see he's got pressure crashing in on him and just forces it over the middle of the field there in the direction of Hunter Renfro. Actually, that's Mac Collins, number 10. Can't do that. Forces it into traffic. The ball gets batted up in the air. Thankfully, it hit the ground. Otherwise, it would have been intercepted. So occasionally, although Jarrett Stidham makes plenty of good plays, he also puts some boneheaded plays like this on tape. Sometimes he's just got to learn to let the play die and eat the sack and live to fight another down. He just sort of yeets this ball here, having no idea where it's really going to go. And he's damn lucky that this one wasn't intercepted. So those are the kind of plays that Sean Payton is definitely going to have to coach out of Jarrett Stidham in the event that he has to see playing time for us. Because that's just an ugly, ugly play right there. And again, that's kind of a play you'd expect Drew Locke to make. And again, really lucky he's not intercepted. And that's actually a precursor to the final throw of the game. He's under center this time, and he throws it up under pressure to nobody, essentially. He was looking for Devontae Adams with the press coverage up here on top. But sometimes you see Jarrett Stidham make throws like this that get him into trouble. They had the chance to go downfield and get the game-tying field goal. Instead, Jarrett Stidham just yeets it up. And that is good night for the San Francisco 49ers. So, overall, guys, definitely a lot to like with Jarrett Stidham. I feel like he's going to provide really high-level quarterback play for us in the event that he has to see the field. 
It's pretty clear after watching the tape why Sean Payton likes him and why the team is paying him elite level backup quarterback money. At the end of the day, man, Russell Wilson did not play up to his standard last year and he also has dealt with injuries for two years in a row. The Broncos needed an insurance policy and they really feel like that Jarrett Stidham can be a solid insurance policy. Without a doubt, when you turn on the tape, he is a clear and obvious upgrade over Brett Rippon. He's essentially Brett Rippon, but with more or arm talent. Sidham's a good decision maker. You see him consistently with poise under pressure, always gets the ball generally where it needs to go. Obviously not on this play, but for the most part, he gets the ball where it needs to be and is a good point guard for this offense. He can distribute the ball into the hands of his playmakers, and he's also got a bit of a gamer's side to him. He can make plays happen. So that's a bit of a aspect of his game that's similar to Russell Wilson's game. So in theory, the Broncos wouldn't have to change as much on offense if they had to insert Jarrett Stidham in there. So overall, guys, after watching the tape, how do you guys feel about the Denver Broncos bringing in Jarrett Stidham? Drop those comments down below. I would love to hear from you. Be sure to leave a like on this video as well as subscribe and ring the bell so these videos appear in your notification feed. And while you're at it, guys, be sure to follow me on Twitter at Gage Madrid NFL for continuing Broncos coverage. And for now, guys, this has been another episode of Denver Broncos Syndicate. I am your host, Gage Madrid, saying peace out.